We are fortunate to have amidst us Professor Robert C. Richardson, Department of Physics, Cornell University and Nobel Laureate in Physics 1996. Professor Richardson obtained his bachelor's and master's degrees in physics from Virginia Polytechnic Institute in 1958 and 1960 respectively and PhD from Duke University in 1966. He, has, he briefly served in the US Army as a second lieutenant before joining Cornell University in 1966 as a research associate. He became a professor in 1968 and was promoted to full professor in 1975 and in 1987 was named the Floyd R Newman Professor of Physics he was the director of Cornell's laboratory of atomic and solid state physics between 1990 and 1996 he served as senior vice provost for research from 1998 to 2007 as the senior science advisor to the president and provost from 2007 to 2009 and the founding director of the Carly Institute at Cornell for nanoscale sciences from 2004 to 2009 In 2008 he was named senior vice provost for research emeritus. Professor Richardson's collaborative research with David M Lee and Douglas D Osheroff led in 1971 to the discovery that helium 3 a rare isotope of helium can be made a superfluid that is flow without resistance at temperatures close to absolute zero. This discovery disproved the widely held belief that helium 3 could not reach a superfluid state and has transformed research in low temperature physics. In 1996 Professor Richardson Professor Lee and Professor Osheroff shared the Nobel Prize in Physics for this discovery. These researchers at Cornell University were low temperature specialists and had built their apparatus themselves. With it they could produce such low temperatures that the sample was within a few thousandth of a degree of absolute zero. Professor Richardson and Professor Lee were the senior researchers while Professor Douglas Osheroff was a graduate student in the team. The Nobel Prize caps a long list of awards Professor Richardson has received including Sir Francis Simon Memorial Prize in Low Temperature Physics by the British Institute of Physics and the Oliver E Buckley Solid State Physics Prize from the American Physical Society in 1981. We might add that DIA had the honor of hosting Professor Osheroff as the inaugural speaker at the previous edition of Cancer last year. Professor Richardson in his lecture entitled The Looming World Shortage of Helium describes that while it took 4.7 billion years for the earth to manufacture helium it will be squandered in 150 years since its discovery i now invite professor richardson to enlighten us with his inaugural address i'm going to talk about science policy rather than real science and it's a a, a talk intended for scientific laymen uh the press and the US Congress this is a uh, an outline of my pet talk and i will start with the chemistry of helium helium has no chemistry a mere placeholder uh in the periodic table uh it's a, a mere Place here held in, in the periodic table between hydrogen and lithium, uh, and it doesn't form a molecule under any circumstances. It has important physical properties. Um, is it is as in earth. it has the highest thermal conductivity of any gas and it's transparent to neutrons um and it has the lowest boiling point of any, any gas it's my favorite element i have made a career of studying helium since 1960 as it is it it's is also a superfluid the geology of helium this is an important point there is no primordial helium left from its uh, creation 
on earth uh, from the creation four and a half billion years ago. Most of the useful helium in the world is the result of alpha decay of rocks. Uh, trace elements of uh, uranium and radium and thorium. Uh, it's trapped in the, uh, along with methane, deep in the earth. A tiny amount of helium comes from the sun. It is captured temporarily in the Earth's atmosphere before it is boiled off. Uh, the equilibrium population of helium in the Earth's atmosphere is five parts per million, and it's uh, uh, not sufficient to uh, uh, refine because of the uh, energy cost to uh, uh, purify, it, purify it. Once the helium is released to the atmosphere, it diffuses to, to the stratosphere, and it is lost to the Earth forever. This is a, a cartoon representation about the uh, helium uh, in the American Southwest through the uh, book in geology. Uh, the richest wells uh, of methane, methane uh, helium wells um, are located in the American Southwest. Um, and it's trapped in salt bombs and the uh, uh, overlying the granite and limestone. Uh, in some cases, the, uh, the methane c contains 2% helium. In the rest of the world, including the eastern U.S. and Canada and Mexico and the North Sea and uh, Russia and Asia, Africa, the helium concentration is a hundred times less than the rich wells of uh, North America. The history of helium gas. In 1903, helium gas of 2% concentration was found in the uh, gas field in Kansas, uh, and uh, uh, subsequently uh, one of other uh, rich helium rich mines. Um, helium was used as a lifting gas uh, in uh, the military dirigibles. Uh, in the, the 1925, uh, the uh, U.S. government transferred control of the uh, refining of helium to the U.S. Navy. And, uh, uh, and, and the, the uh, dirigibles were, were were called airships. So significant commercial use uh, began uh, after the dramatic 
the explosion of the Hindenburg dirigible in 1938. Uh, uh, the Hindenburg employed hydrogen instead of helium as a lifting gas. And this uh, explosion uh, occurred in uh, Rakehurst, New Jersey. Uh, uh, passengers were, were, were coming from uh, Berlin to New York City. And, and this is a photograph of, of the explosion. The length from here to there was 300 meters. And uh, uh, it, it specula speculated that a uh, uh, light lightning stroke uh, set off the hydrogen. Uh, that's a big bomb. The production and helium uh, greatly expanded in World War II uh, because the blimps were used in uh, convoy protect protection. The rocket program during the uh, Cold War expanded helium uh, production further because um, the uh, fuel tanks of uh, hydrogen and oxygen were purged out using liquid helium. Um, in the 1925, I mean, uh, in 1960, uh, the uh, uh, U.S. Congress uh, decided to uh, have uh, a strategic reserve uh, in the uh, Bush salt realm, and, and it's, it's a different bush from the uh, Georges. And it, it was located in Amarillo, Texas. And they uh, also created a pipeline through the network uh, from Kansas and Texas to facilitate the shipping of the helium from the uh, Amarillo um, liquefaction plants were built near the salt realm and it was transported not only in the U.S., but it, it was transported in to uh, Europe and Asia in liquid form because uh, the transportation is much simpler than high pressure bottles. By 1980, the total gas in the stockpile exceeded 1 billion cubic meters. Um, and the World uh, annual co consumption is uh, less than uh, a fifth of this quantity. And the United States uh, uh, uses 50 percent. In 1996, the U.S. Congress passed an another Helium Act. The it instructed the Bureau of Land Management to sell off all of the helium in the, the, the bush salt realm by the year 2015. 
the uh, panel in the year 2000 uh, was um, asked to evaluate the act and the panel reached the current uh, uh, the conclusion that uh, that with the current rate of production of uh, the there would be a, a surplus of helium for the foreseeable future. Excuse me. And a new study was commissioned in 2008 to, to see how the 1996 Act had do had gone, and uh, I, I was a, a co-chair of the panel, along with Charles Grote, um, a uh, uh, Texas University, Texas University uh, geologist, and the panel had drawn. Uh, 18 members um, from uh, various user groups, the people from the gas industry, uh, geologists, and economists. And we found a significant danger at the current rate of uh, world usage, the world supply it was uh, in danger uh, of running out uh, of helium from the underground resources. Um, the easy part of helium. The NRC report is uh, contained uh, on the web, and it was uh, the uh, selling of the nation's helium reserve, and it was released Jan last January, and it, uh, you can download it. Uh, the NAP uh, st stands for the National Academies Press. Why sh should the ordinary person care about helium, and particularly the world? Well, the most uh, the, the, the uses of helium are manifold, but uh, the major user, uh, as for liquid helium, and this is uh, pressurizing and purging the rocket engines, uh, the, uh, this one uh, is the gas used in welding, uh, this is controlled atmospheres, etc. And you, you see that the uh, since 1975 to 2001, uh, the uh, uh, quantity of helium in the world uh, used uh, the quantity of, of helium in the world is expanded. The uh, major expansion was uh, the invention of 
uh, MRI, or medical imaging. This is the percent total, and it was uh, liquid helium used. And <laughs> the medical images are formed by uh, placing the subject sub patient uh, in a large magnetic field, seven Tesla, and uh, uh, performing the MRI on soft tissue of the body. Um, it's irreplaceable method for med medical imaging because it uh, can see the soft tissue of the body. The, the liquid helium is used to cool the, uh, the superconducting magnet uh, and the, uh, the superconducting wire requires uh, su such low temperatures for uh, cooling it. The uh, cryogenic use of for, uh, advanced science, fundamental science, is only about 3%. This pie chart is the uh, similar uh, uh, graph of, of the uses. The problem is that the U.S. government sold uh, the helium uh, too cheaply. Um, the This graph uh, illustrates uh, the uh, price of helium from uh, 1999 to uh, 2008. Um, the um, dotted line graph is the uh, wholesale rate of the U.S. government, um, and it's crude helium having one percent impurities, and, <coughs> and this uh, plot represents the uh, report reported grade A price for the lucky few users that are located on the uh, pipeline. Um, and 19, no, 2008, this price corresponded to the uh, 11 cents, U.S. cents, uh, to uh, fill a one cubic foot hard balloon. The government sold this helium for five cents. Or in uh, Prices of liquid and helium. Uh, these, this corresponds in 2000 to a dollar thirty a liter of liquid and uh, four dollars a liter liquid, and this is to the. Uh, 
best customers, uh, we were paying in my laboratory uh, $4, $4 a, a liter in uh, 2000, and the, uh, uh, the cost per liter is uh, risen to $12 a liter. Now, the, 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 this is a, a complicated graph. The uh, uh, right-hand scale uh, is milliliters of cubic meters per year of the U.S. production. Uh, U.S. sales and the world production are given in the left scale. And to the right scale, the, uh, uh, the total uh, volume stored in the Bush Dome. So it's uh, in 1980, uh, we had a billion cubic meters. And the uh, 1996 Act dooms this quantity to be zero in 2015. The world use in helium has changed rapidly and the, uh, the um, American usage in Canada and Mexico and South America is represented by this bar, bar. then the European usage, and then Asia. And it, it, it's extrapolated to, to be under 45% uh, uh, American usage and the uh, same usage uh, in Europe, but in Asia, in Africa has, has expanded. Um, <laughs> the um, the actual production of helium uh, in 2007 uh, had a uh, uh, hundred, this is a uh, um, million of cubic meters, a hundred million cubic meters from the uh, uh, stockpile and uh, the U.S. production was 141 uh, million cubic meters. And the, the rest of the world, Algeria, Russia, Poland, Qatar, made 36 uh, million cubic meters. So, The, uh, uh, the strategic stock, stockpile represented 60% uh, of the uh, world yet production. Natural gas is the dominant part number in uh, the production of helium. And, uh, not 
very many sources are uh, left for methane because most of the world has been explored. Algeria and Qatar liquefy the natural gas for transportation to markets in uh, uh, Europe and, and Asia. And even though there is a weak concentration of helium in their methane, uh, it's easier and more cost effective to produce helium from liquid natural gas because liquid na natural gas uh, boils at 15 degrees Kelvin. If the price of helium rises, it will be cost a bit effective for the world to uh, uh, the rest of the world to make uh, helium and, and liquefy the, the methane. And the important point of my talk is at the rate of usage in 2008, recession, the world's supply of helium will run out in 25 years unless the current supply of helium is recycled and more helium is produced from the natural gas. My only, my own conclusion, helium is sold far too cheaply. <laughs> the Bush Dome dominates and dominates and subsidizes the market, and it will continue to do so. And until at least 2015. It is better to raise the price of a factor of 20 now, now than a factor of 10,000 in 15 years' time. Most users uh, must find an alternate gas, argon for helium and welding and, and, and earth gas use. Uh, argon is uh, plentiful, uh, it was uh, found in air, it's 2,000 times more plentiful than uh, helium. Hot air and steam for lifting the gas. Industrial and rocket users must find a way to recapture the helium. And cryogenic users must uh, recycle their helium and uh, Closed system. Most NMR and, and MRI systems already have those cycles for their superconducting magnets. If we take action now, we will might have helium enough for centuries. And I'll conclude with a, a, a frivolous use 
uh, I took a uh, uh, photograph in Los Angeles in February of last year, um, and uh, uh, a mile of moon. Was used to celebrate uh, a, a happy Valentine's Day on February 14th, uh, and it cost three dollars and ninety-nine cents. A far cry, far cry from the five cents the. Uh, DLM charges, but I, it's not nearly as ex expensive as I want to have it. Um, I would favor a factor of 20, and so it will be a $80 balloon. I understand in India, uh, hydrogen is used routinely for uh, children's party days, and, and that's a good, a good idea. So, I'll conclude my talk. <laughs>